YouTube, YouTube, what is going on? I'm your host, Runaway Child, and I'm back at y'all with another one. I know y'all been missing me, man, and I've been missing y'all as well. But if you haven't hit that subscribe button, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. And if you haven't put a like on this video, go ahead, throw a like on this video, man. Like don't cost you anything. It is for free. So please show your boy some love. But anyhow, what I got for y'all today is I am so sorry that I have not been dropping any content. But I was thinking about giving this thing up, man. But I saw a video a couple of days ago over on Cam Newton's channel, um, Funky Friday, that kind of whipped me back into place. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it was a great interview. He had two guys on there, one of them by the name of uh, Alex Good Energy and the other one by the name of uh, Jeremy Hill. Both two great guys, all three great guys, Cam Newton. I mean, his channel has been growing and growing, and he has some amazing things going on on his channel. You know, so Cam, please, man, don't flag my video. You say you don't want to hand people things that you would rather give them an opportunity. Well, hey, give me an opportunity, man. Fair use, fair use. So if y'all see this video, man, don't run and go tell Cam that I'm using his content. But I just want to highlight some of the things that these guys talked about in this video, man. If you're part of the logistic world, I think you should really pay attention to what these guys were saying. I'll give y'all my, my feedback on it as the video goes. But I won't play the whole video. I'll just touch on some of the key points that these guys touched on. Make sure y'all go subscribe to Cam's um, channel. It's called Funky Friday. Make sure y'all subscribe to him on Instagram. Um, I tell people I don't give handouts. I give opportunities. Mm -hmm. My success would not hit the same if somebody gave it to me. Yeah. I wouldn't have nothing to talk about on this stage in front of these thousands of people yeah. if it would have been handed to me. What yeah. I'm gonna talk about? Yeah. Now, in my midst today, we have two black entrepreneurs, men that are doing it in their own way, same industry, in a way that they're making their own impact. We have a business mogul, a CEO, a life coach, a, did I say CEO? I did say that. And a person who has created a genre for you know, influencers to use their voice in a positive way. Alongside of him, we have another person, a visionary, a person who's using his influence in a positive way by being a business owner and impacting the transportation industry. To my left, we have Alex Good Energy, and to my far left, we have Jeremy Hill. Fellas, what the fuck is good? Man, honor, honor to be here, brother. Yes, sir. Good, man. Sure. Yes. <laughs> So man, look, let's get right on to it. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, like I said, we are we are this this episode is is very strategic for me because as I kind of get into the transportation industry for my own, I think you are a person that every time I talk to somebody whether they're trying to get certificates, whether they're trying to apply for different you know, insurances or MC numbers, DOT numbers, don't matter what it is, your name keeps coming up. Bro, have you reached out to Alex, bro, dude, bro, in Atlanta, bro, da, 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 da. To the viewer who doesn't, may not know you, what is it that you do? Right. I literally just started my own trucking company in 2012, and I had just had literally had just started my Instagram page, man. Mm -hmm. And at the time, you know, I just started sharing my journey like I was like what am I gonna post about and the only thing that I was consumed with at that time was my trucking company like I was 100% focused on it so uh, with the little bit of followers I had at the time I had about 800 followers um, I was just showing the journey of me getting my first truck right. um, I was super transparent showing them like when I lost my first truck when I when I went out of business in the first 11 months and then I grinded back to get it back up and running I was literally just showing and being super transparent with what I had going on right. And then when I finally started seeing some daylight was uh, 2015 mm -hmm. is when I finally like really started like having some sort of success in the game. Just actually being green, actually making a profit. You know, yeah. I had been running for the first uh, three or four years. I was running a nonprofit organization is what my accountant called it. Mm -hmm. But when I, I finally seen my first profit in green in 2015 once I worked out all my kinks. Right. And um, the following years when I did my first seven figures in trucking. Mm -hmm. And it was at that moment um, I hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> now, before you sit up here and just subtly say yeah. figures, you said how many figures? Seven. Real numbers. Yeah. As as the young folks say, or the Gen Z say, no cap. 
None at all, yeah. Alex Good Energy has a million dollar company and he doesn't even own a CDL. And I find this to be amazing. Nah, I never drove a truck a day in my life, man. <laughs> yeah, I never, uh, to this day, I, I don't got a CDL. How you own trucks and you don't drive trucks, you right. dig? And it's so funny because I, I ended up uh, meeting my mentor, you know him, uh, E.T. the Hip Hop Preacher. Yeah, yeah. And when I first met him, man, uh, the first thing he said was, man, I, I, I've been hearing about you and you done did all this and you ain't drove, you ain't never drove a truck. Like it, it take a certain level of execution to pull us off Correct. without driving a truck. So what ended up, what started off as a handicap for me, mm -hmm. ended up being my superpower and being yeah. a part of my story. You, have you ever drove a truck, Jerry? Never drove a truck, bro. And what's like your claim to fame of how you find you know, the means to take care of your family? Um, almost similar to him. You know, 2014, got into the industry uh, under another company, um, was successful inside that company, but, but realized that uh, they wasn't respecting me as such. You know, it was a industry where the minority was slim to none. You know, I was in the office full of, you know, Caucasians. Mm -hmm. You could say the numbers was probably 10 to one. Um, and then I just took a leap of faith, you know, and said, you know, only thing that they was giving me was a computer and a phone and some insurance. What makes you guys better than me? Right. Independently. And independently. Right. How important, and the same question goes for both of you guys, it's like, how important is image and not changing, you know what I'm saying, in an industry that may not look like you, but you being you is, like you said, your superpower. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think Migo got a song, We Set the Trends. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I didn't want to be like nobody else. I definitely wanted to be my authentic self. And it's so funny because when I got in the trucking, it wasn't sexy. Mm. You know, trucking wasn't a sexy uh, industry. It's stealing. I'm just here to represent and show people that, you know, you don't got to get a record deal. You don't got to have a sports contract to live the same life that right. they live. You know what I'm saying? We grew up thinking that we had to play ball and we had to um, sing and rap in order to uh, drive how we drive and live in the big To way. make it out. Yeah, right. for sure. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, I think entrepreneurship, man, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's a new wave because it's been here, mm -hmm. but um, we really show people that entrepreneurship can get you exactly what you want to get. But it's not, it's not that it's a new wave. I think the thing that and, and not to say that you're wrong or right, mm -hmm. I'm saying that we're not used to seeing people that look like us right. and have our same type of likes for things mm -hmm. to really make real money. You feel what I'm saying? And it's like when you're saying bringing in seven figures, that's a wowing kind of like, hold up, wait, what you said, who? You know, like making a couple thousand, yeah. that's still good money. You feel me? And for anybody who sees this, like, don't don't let this man's success discredit your journey. Everybody's journey is different. You know what I'm saying? How I got to where I'm at, where he got to where he is, where you got to where you are, is completely different. The vision is the same. Now, the route to that vision may 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 go Absolutely. in your own way. I think a lot of times we try to follow what other people do. Mm. Yeah. And it's so, so important that everybody run their own race. Yeah. Correct. You understand? Because yes. like I used to throw parties. I, I was a big promoter. I used to work with Alex and all that. And it was cool, but I realized like I can't do that till I'm 60 years old. Yeah. Right. So it took me hopping out of the cool zone and jumping into an industry that is literally recession proof. Like there's no way that the trucks can stop. Mm -hmm. And that decision right there is what changed my life. What is a broker? You know what I mean? Like to 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 the to the untaught ear, what would you say or how would you identify a broker to be? A broker, we could keep it transparent. It's almost like a real estate agent. Okay. Right? So the real estate agent, they don't own the house, right? They don't own the money, right? But they make the money off the deal. And you need a real estate agent to buy a house. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, right? You yes, need sir. them to be able to complete the transaction. I don't own the truck. I don't own the product, right? But nine times out of 10, all the owner operators, all the, the trucking fleet companies, they don't have time to prospect or get these accounts or establish these um, these uh, contracts um, to keep their trucks moving, you cool. know? So they rely on the broker to kind of facilitate um, their trucks the way accordingly. So did you graduate from college? No, didn't graduate from college. College. 
Uh, I went for three months. So <laughs> I'm assuming you can't graduate in three months. <laughs> yeah, I went to three months and I dropped out. I figured it, was, it wasn't for me. Right. Yeah. But when you look at, when both of you guys look at you guys' is bank accounts. Mm -hmm. All right. They said it couldn't be done. So you literally are in a space right now where you can skip over college. Mm. <laughs> you in a situation right now where you can literally put your name on your own LLC, um, come up with a plan, execute on it, and make money than the make more money than the people who own the colleges. Mm. When I seen those numbers, you know, I automatically had the entrepreneur entrepreneur um, mindset to basically say like, yo. I got to figure out how to do this on my own because, you know, it, it was um, it was so different, you know what I mean, right. that nobody else could really respect it. My parents, my mom, you know, I, they come to my house, they see a little two-screen computer in the corner of my house. They hear me calling on the phone, talking on the phone. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> talking to Mr. Amir, yeah. talking to, you know, all these different foreigners having conversations, going out to California, meeting people, eating stuff that I never ate before, just really going out here, building relationships with the industry, understand, like learning how to basically profit off of the gift of gab. Right. Your level of exposure determines your level of success. Wow. So the exposure that he got was him seeing the invoices and seeing like, damn, I'm working in this company and I seen the numbers, yo, there's 200,000 a week. Yeah. All he had to do was see that. And he, he got exposed to yes. that. And that's what lit that fire up under him right. to go ahead and start executing. Right. You dig what I'm saying? To your point about exposure, man, he showed me what he made that week, right? I seen 36,000. And I'm like, man, what the fuck? And he, and first thing he said, like, I know, bit, bro, this ain't enough money. This ain't a lot of money to you. I'm like, bro, thirty six thousand, bro. It's thirty six thousand. Period. You feel me? If thirty six thousand come up missing in my account, I don't care how many M's, commas, yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or numbers in that sure. account. That's still thirty six thousand. Sure. And I'm like, bro, hold on. Explain this to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm used to, you know, uh, broke ribs, broke ankles, bum shoulder, concussion. You know what I'm saying? Sacrificing time away from my family and doing all these different things just to, to have a chance mm -hmm. right. to attain that. Yep. So you doing this without sacrificing all that and you going home to your family yep. each and every night? For us as minorities, you know, with us being so, you know, once again, so good with our, our lingo, bro, you know, and us being able to close contracts in, in the sports entertainment world, you know, in the logistics world, everywhere, bro, like we come together in, in the trillion dollar industry and make decision making. So now, now the next Cam Newton, you know, we come to him and say, bro, we can facilitate all of your product across the nation. Mm. Off of your name, image, and likeness. If you execute during a season, it could become your life forever. When did it, when did it make sense? You know what I'm saying? Like the S sense. And then when it started making the C sense, mm -hmm. you know, did you like both of y'all, like, did you guys have like a moment that was like, oh shit, like this is my out? Mm -hmm. 2017, uh, uh, you know, we're talking about brokers, right. right? He broke down what a broker is. I just want to take 60 seconds and just break down the relationship. More. Okay. So as a trucking company owner, as the fleet owner, I got the trucks. Mm -hmm. You got four major players in the game. You got the shipper, the dude who, the person who actually has the freight, right? right? They Drainage. actually, yeah. yeah. Then you got the broker, who is the middleman between that shipper and me, Very the trucking right. company. Mm -hmm. But then you got this wild card, this fourth person that just came in and got real popular over the last few years, the dispatcher. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? So now that dispatcher plays the middleman between him and me. Yeah. He, the dispatcher, saves me time. Alex got. Eight, eight businesses right now. I ain't got time to be booking loads no more. Right. Right. So now I got this dispatcher in place that communicates with him and negotiates on my behalf. Right. The brokers is a game changer because on day one, you can now get access to freight and be able to book loads and get them on your trailer through this guy on day one. Damn. You don't got the relationships in place yet. You don't got no dedicated right. lanes. You don't got no contracts yet. You still right. new. Correct. So the low board, which is a database yeah. that has all the freight coming in and out of every city in real time, right. that's where he's posting his loads at. And that's where me, the trucking company, I'm going on and finding those loads and me and him are negotiating to make the transaction happen. Correct. Right. So again, I just wanted to be clear um, there's a love-hate relationship between the carriers and the brokers because the carriers always feel like the brokers are trying to take 
All the profits, that's you know what I'm saying? But I tell the carriers this, don't feel that way. If you feel like you're getting robbed, that means you don't know how to negotiate. Cool. That means you don't know the market. And that's where the education comes in, that yes. education before compensation when it comes to trucking. The, it was me doing good business. See, you got to overdo good business in trucking. Yes. Your communication, your name, yes. that's everything. No, hold on, 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 <laughs> stop. This is not just a trucking thing because my issue is a, it's, that's a life thing. Absolutely. Yes. You know. Uh, my girl always says, how you do one thing is how, how you, you do, do everything. everything. Hell yeah. You, see, you feel me? So for me, I'm. you're not going to meet another person that loves to support black businesses like me. Who, who, likes to, who likes to invest in small businesses, who likes to give the working dollar to the working class, a, a small business owner or whatever. But my, my thing is this. If I'm going to take my $15 and take it to Chick-fil-A, I'm not just paying for that chicken sandwich. I'm not just paying for that lemonade. Even though both of them is right, I don't eat chicken, I'm vegan. But if I were to pay for some fries, right, that, my pleasure, is what I'm paying for, right? So if you want me to take that $15 and invest it back into a black small business, right, I expect that same uh, uh, kind of residual uh, uh, attitude when it comes to serving, whether it's food, whether it's uh, 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 whether I'm buying something from you, clothes or whatever. You dig what I'm saying? Because that's the whole customer consumer experience. Yeah. And I don't think a lot of people understand that to that, to that to that degree because it is a deal breaker for me. And I'll be so disheartened sometimes because I'm like, bro, I want to do right. I want to invest in, in, or I want to, I want to take my dollar and, and and buy black. Because like for me, I don't, I don't look at that as a threat. Anybody who sees this story, these stories, and feel like, oh man, they just going on here just a stunt, talking about they made a million dollars a day. Like, no motherfucker. I'll be trying to downplay the success cam. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'll be trying For to what? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> Yo, what my man say, if it's true, it ain't bragging. Yeah. yeah. You know what it is, people? It starts off as motivation for some reason with our culture, bro. Like it starts off with they they motivate, they motivated by you. And then when you get too successful. It's like the envy comes in. It's weird, bro. Like, I don't know what it is. He man. ain't got that stuff. That I seen him and his girl in his home, but the other day, and they was over there talking about having an argument at the cashier. Flex, he, it, it's giving fraud, yeah. it's giving scammer. But you know what I get, though, Ken? They, they be like, oh, he just got rich off the courses, right? That's the hate that I be getting, mm. right? Like, I'm going to just keep it 100 on the we on your show. Keep it funky. We're going to keep it funky, right? Yes, sir. The hate that I get is, oh, Alex got rich off courses. You dig what I'm saying? Or... He, he make more money off the courses than his trucks, right? But let me ask you this. My question to them was, okay, if my courses are doing so good, is it because maybe it's a good damn course? Correct. Right. Like, Come on. like wouldn't, exactly. wouldn't the word be out by exactly. now four right. years later that the course was, exactly. was BS if it right. was? Right. Um, what's, the, what's, the, what's the caution tape, uh, Jeremy, you know, for you when you do come into a surplus of money? You know, I had an individual talk about, man, I blew through my first couple checks so fast. And now that I think back, it's like, wow, like what happened? You know, but for you, people don't necessarily know you to be this. Now that you're right. a businessman, right? your family ain't used to you, you right. know, walking around in Balenciagas, right. walking around in Celine, walking right. around in Dior, walking right. around these things. And how do you balance this new version of yourself versus the old version that everybody's used to seeing you at? Um, really just understanding that, you know, this path that I'm walking is going to be um, different than anybody else that's around me, mm -hmm. you know, and it just really gives me confirmation um, to know that those times where it looked to seem that they could have been right on what they depict over my life was was not even true. Mm -hmm. So even to my correlation of how I handle anybody else, I try to be so, I try not to be judgmental due to the fact that everybody's success story is gonna be different. Make sure y'all subscribe to him on Instagram, um, Alex Good Energy, and make sure you go and subscribe to Jeremy Hill on Instagram. Um, they, they had some great content that they talked about. I mean, they couldn't have said it better.
leave me a comment leave us i ain't gonna say we leave us the whole flare nation the whole flare gang leave us a comment in the in the in the comment box man make sure you go to the description box and uh check out the video the full length video and uh shoot cam a, a like on the video you know let him know in his comment box also what you thought about it you know make sure you like make sure you subscribe and make sure you share this content you know hit that little noty bell that way you'll be in the know of every time we drop content over here on flare trucking also tell a friend to tell a friend runaway child and we are oh.